today we've got ourselves our first race car to go up on our leaderboard. We've never timed a proper thoroughbred thing and this is the Radical SR3 XXR. It sits above the SR1 in their range and it's a proper race car, a proper thoroughbred. It uses a Suzuki Hayabusa motor with 232 horsepower and it weighs barely more than 600 kilograms. This thing is a featherweight but it has extreme power. Oh and by the way it revs to 10,000 rpm. It's got a sequential six-speed gearbox and of course slick tires. Add a load of downforce on it from this prototype style bodywork and the fact that this thing is totally optimized for the track. So I reckon this thing has a very good chance of getting to the top of our leaderboard. What remains to be seen is whether I can get anywhere close to its limits. We obviously timed the Spartan not long ago. That thing is a carbon bodied and very high revving machine, supercharged as well. It did a 114.14. So let's see if this thing can go any faster. Now you won't be surprised to hear that I wanted a few laps of practice before going hell for leather in Radical's new race car. So while you ride on board with me as I get to grips with it, I can talk you through the SR3 XXR spec. Evolving on the proven formula of the SR3 XX, which is said to be the world's best selling thoroughbred racer, the SR3 XXR makes even the most extreme hypercar look a bit sluggish. It uses a little 1.5 litre four cylinder engine, but it's been built for racing by Radical, so it produces 235 horsepower and revs to 10,000 RPM, which sounds like this. As you can hear, the sequential gearbox also now bangs through cogs with even more ferocity. So going full throttle in the XXR is more akin to hanging onto a rocket booster of full thrust than driving anything with wheels. And then you hit the brakes, and it feels like you've just driven high speed into a wall of fudge. The stopping power and brake pedal feel is truly exceptional. As for the chassis, the XXR uses a space frame structure wrapped in Le Mans prototype inspired composite bodywork. Altogether, the car weighs little more than 600 kilograms, or to put that into perspective, about half the weight of a current generation Mini Cooper. It uses fixed aerodynamic parts, including that sharp front splitter, shark fin, and dominant rear wing to produce a claimed 2.3G of lateral corning force. Although in my timed lap, the G meter recorded 2.6 for me and didn't my neck know it. As for how this thing handles on its slicks, I was expecting something quite terrifying and challenging to reach the pizza, but true to Radical's form, the team has once again created a race car that is approachable and forgiving at 7 tenths, yet also exhilarating and highly demanding at 8 or 9 tenths. God knows what 10 tenths is like. The balance is beautiful, but if you hammer the brakes and turn in, the car actually rotates towards the apex, loads up with this immense downforce, and lets you chase the throttle way earlier than logic would suggest, like way, way earlier. Put simply, this should be the fastest thing we've timed on our track yet. In fact, it should be the fastest thing to have lapped it ever. The current record is a 1 minute 14, set by Spartan's road legal featherweight earlier this year. So, what will the Radical do? Let's find out. We did it, we've set another lap record at the track and this thing absolutely blitzed it. I can't believe how fast it was. It was like six seconds or five and a half seconds quicker than anything before. Of course, it has slick tires and all this downforce, but it's not the most powerful thing we've driven. 232 horsepower is barely hot hatch level these days, but when it's in a 600 and something kilogram car, well, it's pretty effective, I think we can all agree. Do you know what? There were corners out there as well where I could have definitely gone completely flat out. There were some corners through the middle where I had a lift and I know a pro pro, like a proper pro, would have stayed with their foot to the floor. But I thought I want to bring it home in one piece. Also on the brakes as well, this thing doesn't have carbon ceramics like the 911 we drove recently, but because it's so light, the brakes 
braking potential was just unbelievable. I didn't have a hands on, so my neck was really having to hold me up. So I might have got to maybe, let's say 85% of his potential, and I'm pretty happy with that to be fair. And the best thing of all is that I could get to that very quickly. This car, despite the way it looks and the way it sounds, is actually very approachable. And of course, Radical do make more extreme models like the SR10. So I think the door is open for an even faster time to be set by Radical. Anyway, let us know what you thought of the video in the comments below. And of course, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hopefully, we'll get some more race cars down, but we'll also get back to some hot hatches as well. See you soon.